they will get back to Jesus, you know. And they want to get away from it, you know. And, and I, I thank God for you all. You know, I, mean, I, thank, I thank God for that. Yeah. I'm very thankful. I thought about a dream I had when Brother Will was still with us. I had a dream one time. I'll never forget it. It was in this, we were in this, this big old, everybody in the church was in this big old um, farming community. Now I saw these beautiful green crops coming up everywhere. This this was years ago. I saw all these these crops everywhere growing, and it was so beautiful. And and everything everything was fruitful. Everything was harvesting. Everything was doing great. And so what happened? Um, what happened? Um, it, I said, and then I saw brother Bill, brother Will at a blackboard, right? One of, he was his He had one of the pointers and. Where there was chalk and everything, everybody was there. And I think when I had that dream, that was Tim Ball, you know, in his presence, he's still here. You know, I know he's with the Lord and everything. You know, he's my God. He, he preached here in open prayers for yeah. a long time. Boy, I'm one of the last ones to come. I've only been here about about 12 years, I think it is, something like that, 12 years or so, whatever it is. But in that dream, I saw all those crops everywhere. It was a fine place, a little community. I, I think that was symbolic of the fruit of Victory Faith Fellowship. I believe that was. It was fruitful and it was green. And, and I just loved that little community. It was, felt like it was safe from the rest of the world. Kind of like an oasis on the desert, you might say. But it was just so beautiful. You know, I said, oh my God, I feel so so good here. I said, I love this place. But, but I mean, I saw all this fruit. And that could be, in, in everyone's life, you know, there could be spiritual fruit. And you could have um, fruit that people can see tangible fruit, blessing, any kind of, any kind of fruit, relationships, families being, being together, everything else. But it was very fruitful. And so you, you don't want to, you don't want to get away from here. Right? You want to stay where it's good. Jesus said if we if we abide in the vine, we'll bear fruit. But if we're cut off from the vine, if we're cut off from Jesus, right? That's in the um, um that's in the fifteenth chapter of John. Right? In the sixteenth chapter he talks about in the fourteenth chapter the Holy Ghost being the comforter. But but we don't ever want to sever ourselves from Jesus. We don't ever want to get too far or far away. We want everything to be green. And I noticed everything in that dream was green there. That means you had to be connected to the source, right? And the fellowship, right? Because it says in the first John, if we don't um, love one, one another, how does the love of God abide in us? Those two greatest commandments right there you were talking about. So anyway... I just wanted to, to leave that with you. I saw, I said, oh, the Lord, did I think about this dream this morning? Amen. And then she talked about that. Amen. But anyway, confirmation. Amen. Confirmation. I didn't plan on it. It seems like that always happens around here for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Um, they say, well, my brother in law says, well, Jimmy, what are you going to teach on the class? So, well, um, the blessings in Deuteronomy 28. And, then God gives us the raw materials, but it's up to us to to develop those materials and all that. He said, well, and you know, but I said, the Lord can add something. The Lord can add something to what the people need, you know, and he may move, the Holy Spirit move on it. It can change the message or it can go in another direction according to the needs of the people. But everyone... Everyone's spiritual needs are the most important thing in the Lord. And the Lord tailors everything according to his people. For what they um as a shepherd feeds the flock or a minister feeds the flock, the sheep have to have the nutrition, the word of God. Amen. My God, I haven't seen um Mom Wesley since I think it was November or something. Oh my god. Was it November? Or October? Oh my god. It seems forever. And she's got two residences. She's got a residence there. She's got a residence here. And um, actually, she's got three residences because we're seated with Christ in heavenly places. We, we got that's our real home, and this is a, this is our temporary home here. So she she's got th she's got three three homes there. It would be 
nice to have a nice vacation home in Maine where it'd be 70 degrees when it's 100 degrees here, wouldn't it? Yeah, I always thought that would be cool. But you have to winterize it when you leave. So, because everything gets cold up there, you don't want to do that. There's no place for a southern gentleman to be in the winter. Uh-huh. It must be good in the summer, though. But anyway, we're going to talk a little bit about where, where we were at before. And so sometimes we we um, we go on the message and the Holy Spirit of a move us. And say, well, I've got to go back to it. Sometimes it goes a little back. Sometimes it goes a little forward. But, but that's all right. I guess we'll get there in God's time, right? Get there in Jewish time. You know what that is, right? Jewish time. It said it took him uh, 40 years to make an 11 day journey, right? Rather than the sins from, um, from Egypt to the promised land. It took 40 years, right? In 11 days. So, yeah, I know what we might take like 40 years to get out of here, huh? Praise the Lord. 120, right? 120. Yeah, we're getting to 120. Yes. All right. But we were talking about the blessing of Abraham. Um, and we had gotten into it. When the children of Israel left Egypt, I always thought, when I read this, this is kind of something here. It says that God, Exodus 2.24 says, see, y'all hear okay? Okay. Okay, anyway. And God heard their groaning. Children of Israel. Slavery, working overtime, not getting, not getting compensated for it. But, oh. and, he, and God remembered his covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and with Jacob. And God looked upon the children of Israel. And God had respect unto them. He remembered his covenant. What somebody said this morning, did his word doesn't go back unto his void, right? What did he promise? He's a promise keeper, right? All right, he was a promise. This he was a promise keeper. He remembered his covenant with with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob because he's a promise keeper. Psalm 89, 34 says, My covenant will I not break, nor alter the thing that goeth forth from my word of my mouth. So whatever he promised you he will stick to you. Oh. Yes. But the thing is, have you ever made any vows? Or I <clears throat> whatever you promise out of your mouth, you want to keep that promise. It said a good man keeps his word even to his own hurt. Yeah. Right? So even if it costs you a little something, it's better to go to it. Yeah. And a lot of a lot of the word of faith people, um, that I, I partner with too. Um, they say when you, when your uh, spirit, your mind is trained, that you take action on your word, you can get results, right? Because but if you say something and you never pay heed to it, it never brings anything to pass, right? In the book of Job, it said it says. And, and thou shalt decree a thing, and it shall be established. Whatever we decree, that means whatever we say, anytime you keep your vows, you say, and you go, and then in the spiritual realm, you, your spirit man realizes that you're going to act on what you say. It's very important not to just say things in jest, not to say things unfruitfully. So whatever we say, that's got to be what you know, like they used to say a long time ago, the word is your bond, you know. God's word is his bond. Amen? Yes. That's right. But it says in Deuteronomy 16, 12, And thou shalt remember that thou wast his bondman in Egypt. Thou shalt observe and do his commandments. So he told the eat, you know what that is? That's the Passover every year. That's the Passover, and every single year it's remembered, you know. Um, I was a bondman in Egypt. Even though we might not have been there in Egypt, we remember remember what our ancestors went through, where, where they had these painful soils and everything. Even if you're in the church and you become a seed of Abraham, right? When you look at when you are let let me go let me go to that let me see if I can find it here let's see 
if I can get it. Okay, let me let me do it here real quick. For anybody that that might um, might not know this, I'll just say it real quick. In Galatians three thirteen. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. He had made a curse for us. That for it is written, cursed is everyone that hangs on the tree across the black curtain. He took that curse for us. Yeah. All right? That the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles, those that are Gentiles that are born again that are not actually um, Hebrews, you know. So, it, so that blessing will come on them as well as upon us yeah. through Jesus Christ. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. So when you're born again, you're adopted. You're adopted into God's family, right? Yeah. That we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Right? Yeah. So you're Abraham's seed. You're, you're not left out. Uh -huh. Right? So what we have to remember, we have to remember that we were a bondsman in Egypt too. Before we got saved, we were out there doing God knows what. We were miserable doing it. We weren't happy. It, I mean, a lot of things, every one of us probably would have wanted to forget. You know, every one of us, if you're honest with yourself, how we screwed up. But we've always got to remember what we come from, right? Yeah. Just just like um, like we talked about, you know, I noticed everyone here gets it right, comes back to Jesus. If they screw up, I noticed it. That over the years of our victory faith fellowship, we know how limited we are. We know how desperate we were before we came to Jesus. Yeah. I wouldn't, I don't never, you don't never want to forget that Passover. That's what Easter is. Every year, you never forget what you came from. Yeah. And we, don't, we, we don't never supposed to forget what we came yeah. from. You said, oh my God. You know, you don't never forget what you came from. This guy shows up. He said, All right. This guy shows up. 
Can I leave you out? Sure, you know, help me, help me out. I'm lost, you know. Yeah. <clears throat> and then, then, oh, I got this. And after a while, you go back to the map that leads you out there. And then you get lost again. Then, then you see the guide again. Well, the Holy, well, the map is the Word of God. Come on. And so the map is the Word of God. But you need the Holy Spirit to interpret the Scripture for you. He yeah. said, "He said, well, I'll, well, he said in the metaphor, I'll help you out again. Oh, by the way, I wrote the map. <laughs> so the Holy Spirit actually wrote the map for us, right? We might not know where where everything is, but He does. He knows where everything is. At. He knows where. But we need our guide, right? The Paraclete, the Holy Spirit. We need to go. We can't do it without Him. Right? Amen. We can't do it." So anyway, God's been looking looking for a people. I'm good. let's go to Deuteronomy thirty two and nine. Let's go to Deuteronomy thirty two and nine. Like 
three of the guys. One of the guys, um, Eli, he's from, um, he's originally from Colorado. He said the state brought me here, uh, brought me here about, about five years ago. I said, you know Jesus? Yeah. And I'm just, he was an old guy. And he said, um, an old guy, um, anyway, he said, well, I've only been saved about five years and all that. And, and I said, well, you've got to have Christian fellowship, you know. He said, yeah, I know. He said, some of my some of my worldly friends are not good for me. I said, well, you've got to be nice to them. You've got to be nice to them, but you just can't hang hang out with them. Yeah, I know. I said, well, maybe we'll go to church on a Wednesday up there in Statesboro or something like that, you know. But the thing is, is we can't, you know, um, ru- you know, rub elbows too much with, with our friends that are in the world. So what happened is, you know, I think he still had some struggles and everything. I said, you got to have Christian fellowship. So he called us out of this, out of this world. He called us out of everything here to be a, a separate people. But we're to be ambassadors for Jesus Christ, right? We're ambassadors. And um, so we're not of this world. Did I tell you about that example where Bill Winston is one of his, um, some of his people went to an evangelistic um, outreach in Haiti one time. You know, it was in bad shape over there in Haiti. Uh, I know some. I know you. You, you remember. And um, but anyway, I, I don't know if you remember it this Wesley, but but they went over there. Everything's in a, a bad way over there, a really bad way. I've I've never seen it. But we got cities over here that look bad too, though. You know. So on the other side of the island is the. Dominican Republic, yeah. Dominican Republic, and uh, it looks lush and green, but the Haitian man is in bad shape. Mm-hmm. I heard that oh, there was some former, that there was maybe some former slaves that, that practiced some kind of voodoo or something. I don't, I don't know for sure if it is, but anything's in a bad way. And Bill, when Brother Bill went over there, he saw this beautiful big building, you know, it looked like it was just freshly painted white or something. Yeah, and he asked him, who does that place belong to? He said, oh, that's the U.S. Embassy. He said, that's the U.S. Embassy. He said, yeah. He said, sure, it looks nice. It doesn't look like everything around here. But since we're ambassadors, when you step on on to that, um, when you step on that property, right, just like the Russian embassy here, the United States government gives the Russian embassy, right, that piece of land. And, and one of the Russians got himself in trouble and ran to the Russian embassy here. And they, some young, inexperienced police officers were following him in. And then the, the Russian ambassador said, do you realize who you were at? He said, oh, I forgot. He said, so he, they took you come in, right? So that that building maintained by Russia is actually stepping on the Russian property. Yeah. And anyway, so what was the long story short is, over there in Haiti, when you step on to that, that land was ceded from Haiti to the United States of America, the government. So when you step on to that property, you were stepping on the United States of America. That means everything on that building there, Haiti it didn't pay for any of that work going on on the building. Everything provided by that for that embassy is provided by by the by the home country, the United States. And if you are an ambassador and you are called out, you are called out one. You called out of everything. And you are from another government. You're from God's government. That means he's responsible for your clothes. He's responsible for your uh, he's responsible for your food. You know, making sure you can get work, everything that you need in your in your life. Your family, your friends, he he's got you covered. So whatever it is, you can either do you can either do um try to do everything on your own. I got this. I don't need to hear you always say, I got this. And so, and what happens when you get in the middle of the woods somewhere, you don't know where you're at, man. You get in a situation. But I'm sure you wouldn't know anything about that, right? 
<laughs> so in, anyway, but if we obey him, he's got the chorus, he's got the map, he's the guy, he wrote the map, he's the compass, right? He's going to show us where to go. He's going to show, he's got a plan for you, he's got everything. He took all these people, he, he took all these people out of Egypt, 2.5, 3 million people out of Egypt. He had a plan for them. They were called out of Egypt. When they crossed the Red Sea, which is actually the Sea of Reeds, the Sea of Reeds, the waters were parted. Um, that's one of the six um, that foundational doctrines of baptism in the book of Hebrews. So actually, when they went under, when they, they went under that water, they were baptized into their new life when they left Egypt. Same way with Noah in the ark. That was the figure of an ark. And when we get baptized, that's where our old life, we leave it behind. Where we have that new life in Christ Jesus, where everything is brand new, where we're actually we were left out of it. So anyway, that, that's the way it's supposed to go. We're supposed to leave everything behind us. We still can talk to our old friends, but we don't hang out with them and rub elbows with them. To hear, to sound, to get they can talk, you can ask them and say, Hey, you got a problem? Let me tell you about Jesus here. And then let me tell you about Jesus here. Right? And they, um, he, they answered all your problems. It doesn't matter what he is. You know? So you can, can you get away from that. And then he's got a life for you. He's got, he's got a brand new life. Let me give you another example. Um, 1 Peter 2 and 9. 1 Peter 2 and 9. But you were all right. But before that, we'll back up. Unto you, therefore, which believe he is precious, but unto them which be a disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed, rejected, the same as me, the head of the corner, and a stone of stumbling. I'm going to take this off. But anyway, anyway, it says, them that were disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed, the same as they head the corner, and a stone of stumbling, and a rock of offense, even to them which stumble at the word, being disobedient, whereunto also they were anointed. That Jesus Christ, the stone that the builders rejected, right? Mm -hmm. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a peculiar people, to show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. But in time past, you were not a people, but you're now you're the people of God. It says, you're a living stone. It says that the wall is built, that we're a, a wall built of living stones in 7 Peter. And the cornerstone that holds everything together is Jesus Christ, the stone that the builders rejected. That's the 118th Psalm. According to what they say, according to the, the Jewish legend is, they, um, they didn't, um, on the Temple Mount, they didn't want to make a bunch of noise, so they they um, went to the quarry and they and they fit all these stones right and cut that so it wouldn't get too noisy there on the Temple Mount. So anyway, they started putting things together. They saw one stone and said, "Well, you know, this one stone." They said, "This is odd. It's not really like the other ones and all." They just they just tumbled it down. They just tumbled it down the valley. But by the time they got the building built, they found out, well, what are we going to do? How, how the, the capstone to hold this thing together? How are we going to do that? Yeah. Said, said, that was the 
when we go down there, I want to know that the whole building's going to fall down if we don't if we don't do that. If we don't go get that stone, the whole thing's going to fall. You have a capstone. You have a quarter stone. You have a keystone. Like um, Pennsylvania, it's a keystone state where it holds everything above. Oh, I just oh. um, what you were saying is correct, and what came to my mind also is to say that you know, you know it's marriage as well. Yes. For those of us who are married, we need to keep some from not just in our individual right. lives, but well, you know, in our family. You, you, you're exactly yeah. right. Yeah. So what yeah. happens is that piece of the whole building together. Yeah. There's actually on a little rabbit trail here, on a rabbit trail here, um, let's go in the book of Proverbs. It says the threefold cord rope is not easily broken. So what happened is you have these three strands, right? The one that comes in the middle and the other two strands go from side to side and they slap that rope together, right? If any one of those strands break, the other two will hold it together. That means if one of them is, is not holding on the way it should, it says God, the one in the middle, is the one that holds that relationship together. Right? Amen. He's the one that holds it together. But the stone that the builders rejected, they went and got that, that stone there, and that's the way with us. We're all living stones. It says we're the body of Christ, and, and each one of us, they're gifts of the Holy Spirit. And they're brought out from each one of us, but it's for the profit of all. It's not actually for the profit of the one that is manifest, God manifests to give to, but it's for his people. And when we are a wall of living stone with Jesus Christ holding us together, that capstone, cornerstone, keystone, that he's the one that holds us together. He's the glue. The oneness. Yes, right, the oneness that holds it all together. And it says in the Word that the Holy Spirit is the one that places in the body as he wills where each one of us are supposed to go. He's the one that places us in the body as he sees fit. And he's the one in that divinely orchestrates everything and puts it together and makes it whole together. Amen. But just like the atom, there's so many metaphors in nature. So all right, you take um, the Holy Spirit, wind, ruach, right? Right? Um, fire, water, a dove, so many things. But there's also there's also a, a metaphor in the physical science. Is um you can't see an atom, right? Protons, neutrons, electrons, right? So everything, this just has atoms in it, protons, neutrons, electrons, all, the, all these things that go in there. And what holds it together is really weird. You see this, uh, you see these things just spinning real crazy, right? These, these protons, neutrons, electrons, and they're spinning in all these directions, and nobody really knows. Nobody really knows how they don't just fly off somewhere with things. Typical for they don't we don't know, but the word of God says, and I'm there that, that He's the one that holds everything together. That's the mystery. How this atom, how these molecules just will not fly apart. And you have this gravity, the law of gravity, all these things, all these things, these laws that hold. He's the one that holds everything together. He's the one that holds the body of Christ together. But if we didn't have, if we didn't have the Holy Spirit, if we didn't have the Holy Spirit holding us together, if we didn't have that love of God, the first love, remember there's there's no there's actually no church in Ephesus today. It's that. I've seen a, a lot of um charismatic churches, mega churches, so that they actually they actually tear the things down after a while. Somebody will fight with somebody else over the pulpit or ministry or something like that. Because everybody wants to wants to lift themselves up, right? Yeah. Lift up themselves. Don't realize what they come from, right? Yeah. Oh my God, where are we going? But they 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 can bulldoze the property. They they sold they sold or they'll sell out. They can get a little a little Baptist church that might be on the corner for 150 years, you know, where everybody everybody's um, family still goes there, you know, and everything where, where they where they have um, fellowship there, where they have koinonia there and everything. So we can we can put ourselves in a position 
to fly apart, just like Jesus Christ is the one that holds the atoms together. He's the one that holds the bodies together. He's the one. He's the one that does all that. And anyway, um, I'm probably going to, um, I'm probably going to stop here because everybody wants to get paid for it. It looks like there's a good bit of everyone here.